Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Career Technical Education. I'm one of the hosts of this program, Ann Baldwin, and I'm joined today by Jim Beloga. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Ann. How are you? Good. Jim is the president and CEO of YTI Career Institute and also Porter and Chester Institute. So we'll be talking a little bit about both campuses, but we're really focusing on the Pennsylvania campuses today. But I got to start this conversation because you walked into the studio today to do these podcasts and you showed me a picture that really is unbelievable. You're walking your dog this morning. Share with our listeners what happened. Yeah, so uh, so the picture I shared with Ann, uh, just to sort of give everyone a visual, is I, I walk my dog, my golden doodle, uh, every morning, uh, somewhere between 5.30 and 6 a.m., and it's still dark out, obviously, uh, at least in the East Coast uh, where we live. And um, as I was walking, um, I noticed I heard a plane above, and, um, and it was right above me, and I looked up into the sky and saw it. And then as I sort of looked into the distant future, I saw um, like a series of lights, um, and it wasn't sort of a, it wasn't a star constellation or anything like that, but it was a series of lights, um, uh, just sort of almost like in a row. And, um, and so I took a picture of it and it was interesting as the commercial, uh, airplane, uh, flew in its direction, the lights disappeared. So it was, um, so I don't know if I actually saw a UFO sighting this morning. I think you did. You showed uh, me the picture. It looks, <laughs> you know, stranger things have happened, but when your day starts with you seeing a UFO, it's been that kind of day, but it's all good. Yeah. It, it was amazing. I witnessed it. I saw the picture, but you really witnessed it in person. But anyway, let's get on with our, our guest today. We're so excited to have Angie Khan on with us today. She's a program director for medical assisting in uh, Pennsylvania, and also the curriculum development coordinator for both YTI and PCI. So welcome, Angie. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Good morning, Ann. I'm very excited to be here. So, you know, I've been up to your campuses there in Pennsylvania um, recently. Tell us a little bit about um, the medical assisting program that YTI has to offer. Okay, so our medical assistant program in Pennsylvania is a 21-month program, and our students um, at the end of their 21 months become a certified medical assistant after taking their exam. Uh, what, what the students are, are going for is their associates in specialized technology degree. So they actually do walk away with an associate's degree at the end of the 21 months. So um, uh, many of the things that the students will do during this 21 months will, they'll learn the skills needed to be a medical assistant. Uh, they'll help the physician with any kind of um, procedures. They learn phlebotomy throughout this time. They also learn uh, injections um, so that they can give immunizations to their patients. Um, rooming patients. Our students also learn the administrative side of the medical assistant. So it's kind of twofold. They get the, the clinical end of it as well as the administrative end. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's uh, Jim Beloga. Good morning. Um, talk Good morning, Jim. A, talk a little bit about, you know, one of the things that I'm always uh, excited about with our, you know, our associate in specialized technology degree is that, um, you know, obviously the students are going to spend time in the, in, in, in the clinical and the administrative aspects of, you know, of their profession, uh, becoming a medical assistant, but, but talk a little bit, you know, about there's also component in there of the externship as well as, uh, applied general ed. And, and I, I always find it, you know, fascinating where, um, you know, the, this, uh, degree that we offer, um, you know, uh, in this program, uh, has applied gen ed and that, and that's trying to make, you know, those general ed classes maybe a little bit more relevant. So, you know, for all of us, uh, you know, who've, who've sort of had to deal with algebra and not really understanding where we might use it, you know, maybe talk a little bit about how, uh, you know, that aspect of, of the program is specific to, um, you know, uh, the, the relevant, uh, daily tasks that, um, a medical assistant would do, you know, with regards to, you know, you know, communication or English or, or math, um, and then maybe comment just a little bit about the externship as well. Okay. So, um, as Jim said, as Jim said, we do have our, um, applied general studies that our students also, um, take during this 21 months. 
and some of the courses are critical thinking, um, and our and our applied studies classes are actually um, developed to help um, with the actual medical assistant. So our critical thinking class touches on scenarios and those type things where students are put into a real quick have to you know think quick on their feet to handle a situation. So. The students go through many different scenarios um, in that class. We also have a psychology class that the students take that helps them learn, um, you know, how how the brain functions and those types of things. But it also touches on how um, you would interact with a patient who might have some mental health disorders or um, some, you know, other things in psychology. Uh, we also have a communications class that is more geared towards um, communication in healthcare. So it's not just communicating, you know, just with anybody, but actually communicating within the healthcare uh, realm. Um, our students in math class, they they will learn how to um, convert medications and those types of things. So it's not just you know your your regular math class. They're actually learning um, how to um, you know, take take a look at a medication that a patient might need and be able to convert that into the right dose for a patient. Um, so, and we also have a professional development class, which helps prepare our students for the, um, the career, doing their resume, their cover letter, getting them into a mock interview. Um, and then also we have a career success class that also helps set them up for their career so that they are successful um, throughout their time at YTI. That's fantastic because, you know, Jim, here again, another program that takes students, whether you're just, you know, graduating from high school, whether maybe you're an adult learner, you're a veteran that's going to use your GI Bill and get back into the industry. Regardless of it, you take these these students um, and meet them where they're at and take them through fruition because a big part of your accreditation is job placement. So you have these folks and and to you know to um, Angie's point, making sure that they're successful and in the end employed. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, you know, and, and I think the, the the interesting thing that I've always sort of found fascinating is is that. You know, if we if we just approached education, I think in general, in a more um, applied way or an industry modeled way, uh, those gen ed classes then become a little bit more relevant because I think that's the big missing uh, connection for many of us, uh, where you go through just general education and you don't really quite understand where you're going to apply it in your life, and that's what's and I think that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it, I think that um, you know for us we we end up taking this this general education and applying it you know in an industry modeled way, mm-hmm. which is uh, which goes right to our mission statement in terms of, um, you know, how we approach our education. So Angie, wh- why don't you talk just a little bit more about maybe the externship? Cause I think that's another, uh, you know, yeah. um, you know, sort of neat component that, you know, what, what we're looking to do is, you know, obviously the students move through the educational process and then they, they then get out into the real world, if you will, um, you know, in, in a, in a, in a safe environment where they're allowed to, um, you know, really sort of uh, hone their, their tangible uh, hands-on skills that they've learned. And, uh, and again, as Ann talked about, you know, employment, employment's, you know, obviously, you know, the end, the end goal as well, uh, not only to graduate, but also to become employed. Okay. So, um, at the end of the 18 months of, um, your classes, the students actually go out onto a three month externship where they do, Um, close to 360 hours of externship hours. And what that looks like for the student is they're actually out working in a physician's office. Um, They might work at an urgent care facility. Um, Some of our local hospitals will help us out with our externs. Um, So there's, there's many different specialties that our students can get into. And what's nice about that is the students get a real good feel Um, what it's like to work in an office. So they're actually out working in the office um, for those uh, 12 weeks. And at the end of that 12 weeks, then, a lot of times our students are offered positions. And if there isn't a position available at that office, they can get uh, recommendation letters. And then, um, as you know, a lot of our uh, physicians and office faculty talk amongst each other. So it's great. It's a great opportunity for our students to get hired. Um, so having that three-month 
um, actually working with live patients, not just, you know, classmates that they've worked with over the last 18 months, but actually getting out there and seeing how a facility runs, getting the front end experience, getting the clinical experience, and then having the opportunity to interview for that position. Wow. Um, you, you know, that that's fantastic. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, you know, and I've also seen your industry modeled labs that you also have. And with COVID, as we've um, explained before on these podcasts, you know, that it's a blended learning now. So there's there's classroom, remote classroom, and then there's hands on in the classroom. So and this is what we call and we always talk about one of those essential careers. Um, there is never going to be a shortage of folks in nursing and medical assisting. So um, hats off to you, Angie Khan, for um, doing a great job, uh, not only with the programs there in Pennsylvania, but your um, curriculum development as well at, at both YTI and PCI has been fantastic. So if people want more information um, on the medical assisting program or any of the programs that YT offers, you can go to yti.org. Org. And one more thing, Jim, I almost forgot the big question. You go ahead since you pointed it out. Well, well <laughs> yeah. So, um, so again, uh, uh, the next start for us um, is our fall start, and that's on Monday, October 19th. And there's still time uh, if folks uh, have, have some interest in, in, interest in getting again, starting now. So, so again, uh, you know, we've got, uh, you've got a few weeks left, and uh, I, would, I would highly encourage folks, again, to go to yti.edu. Um, yti.edu and that's where they will get all the information you can apply online you can do you, you know we pretty much have made the 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 enrollment process easy, uh, easy um, and electronic so that um, students can you know obviously uh, get through the process mm -hmm. you know with um, you know in this new in this new normal that we're in where we're not necessarily holding um, on-campus um, interviews and on-campus tours anymore right so there is time we want to thank you so much Angie Khan for joining us on this uh, podcast. It's been great information and it sounds like a great program. And as you mentioned, the new start gym right around the corner. So it's not too late to go to yti.edu. And we want to thank all of you for listening to this edition of Inside Career Technical Education.